by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all so Abraham is the father of all those who believe in God all those who believe in Jesus Christ verse 17 as it is written I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believe in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. But this Melchizedek, who entered into covenant with Abraham, and with all the seed of Abraham, in other words, with all the believers to come, was actually Jesus Christ himself, even as the book of Hebrews indicates in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 3, which says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who made Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth, of, uh, the ten, a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, in other words, his name means king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the son of God, abides a priest continually. In other words, he's a priest forever. So he's made like unto the son of God. So that Melchizedek, he's the son of God. In other words, he's Jesus Christ himself. Jesus made a new covenant with mankind through the symbols of wine and bread also. Where the wine represents the covenant of the New Testament and it also represents the blood of such covenant. And we know that it is in the blood that life is found. And the bread which is the result of the preparation of the product of the earth. Even as the body of mankind which is also made from the earth. Hence the bread symbolizes the physical body of mankind. Matthew chapter 26 verse 26 to 29 says and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his to the disciples and said take it this is my body and he took the cup the cup that had one inside and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the New Testament, in other words, of the New Covenant, which is shared for many for the remissions of sins. So if that wine that was in the cup was representing the blood that it would have shed later on on the cross. Verse 29, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, in other words, of the wine, the wine that was in the cup, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is why Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6 verse 35 to say, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. Thus by being crucified, Jesus Christ was offering unto every human being the bread of life which is received 
which is received by whomsoever believes in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That it was done for the forgiveness of the sins of the believer. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the blood is, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the souls. So the life of a person is in the blood. Therefore, in the, the life of Jesus was in his blood. This is to say that by shedding his blood, Jesus Christ was thus giving his life for the believer. Hence making the, the forgiveness of the sins of the believer to be effective. Now, here again, Jesus, who is also Melchizedek, is giving wine and bread to the disciples, the, in other words, to the believers, thus making you a new covenant, in other words, a new testament with the believers. And as the believer fulfills his part of this covenant, by living his life for God in holiness, he shall be clothed with a celestial body at the end. This will thus be the fulfillment of the promise of God. Even the eternal life that God had pro has promised to every believer who will be faithful until the end. Hence the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49 to 53. And as we have borne the image of the earth, of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of, of God. Neither does corruption inherit and corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. In other words, we shall receive eternal life. We shall receive, we shall be clothed with eternity. As Jesus Christ, when giving the bread and the wine, was actually entering into a covenant with mankind, in which he being without sin while on earth, in a physical body, offered his life and body as a sacrifice for our sins that we in return may also offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God by living a life of holiness and as a result we may put on the new celestial body that we may indeed that we may indeed be the true image of Jesus Christ this is why the word of God declares in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have it ever everlasting life in other words eternal life first John chapter 3 verse 16 says hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren not that the bread which represent the body of Jesus of the Lord Jesus is in fact a symbol of the word of God for as the word of God says that the bread strengthens the heart even as stated in Psalm 104 verse 15 it says, and one that makes glad the heart of men and all to make his face to shine and bread which strengthens men's hearts. But we know that it is in the heart that men believe. Thus, faith is kept in the heart. And men believe in the heart unto righteousness. For as they believe, they change their ways to live a godly life. 
In other words, a life of sanctification, a life of holiness. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yet the scriptures also tells us that faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. This is why the book of Psalms state that bread strengthens the heart of men simply because as the, as, as the bread represents the word of God and because the word of God creates faith in the heart of men, thus making the heart stronger, meaning making the faith stronger, for a man can only do as much as he believes. So men can only achieve as much as he has faith so the more you believe the more faith you have the more you will achieve the more it will produce the more it will impact the more it will move mountains Romans chapter 10 verse 17, 17 says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in other words faith comes by the hearing of the word of God so as Jesus gave his life to redeem us, thus we also must give our life to God by walking in total righteousness, living a life of holiness through complete obedience to the word of God. This is why Jesus gave the bread, which is the word of God, to Abraham and to the disciples. And he also gave them the wine which represent his blood that is to say his life hence the word of god states in romans chapter 12 verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service So God gave his life. He entered in covenant with us, giving his life for us, that we in return may give, may live our life for him by manifesting, by portraying, by ex manifesting holiness at all times. And that is at the three level of our being. Holiness in the level of the body, holiness in the level of the soul, holiness in the level of the spirit. And as we do so until the end, we shall inherit eternity. We shall receive the promise of the eternal life. We shall receive the testament, what is written in the testament of God. And that is that eternal life and everything that comes with it so we would like to pray so say this prayer after me I bless you Heavenly Father for your word you have fed me with I pray that it transforms my life positively in the name of Jesus Christ I renew my covenant with you whereby your Holy Son Jesus Christ offer his life for me and giving me your word as instructions for my life. I accept to obey your word fully to live a complete life of righteousness offering you in return my life as a sacrifice of righteousness by living a life of holiness in the name of Jesus Christ. May you help me through your Holy Spirit to live up to the standard of, of life of holiness you require of me in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, let me manifest holiness at the three levels of my being, meaning holiness at the level of my body, holiness at the level of my soul, and holiness at the level of my spirit that I may operate 
in the Holy of Holies where grace is made available where mercy is abounding that I may receive grace for any time of need you say your grace is sufficient for your power is made perfect when we are weak therefore let your grace be upon my life and overpower sin in my life in the name of Jesus Christ let grace be manifest in my life and give me victory over adversity over trials and tribulation over the power of the kingdom of darkness over the agenda and the plan of the kingdom of darkness against my life and against my family in the household in the name of Jesus Christ yes Lord your grace your grace let it be manifest let me leave this life of holiness until the end let me not fail in my part in my in, in my fulfillment in the fulfillment of my part of the covenant that i may receive eternity that i may be clothed with eternity that death forever has no power over me in the name of Jesus Christ this is my uttermost cry unto you that the promise of eternal life that you have made unto me that comes to be effective in the name of Jesus Christ let nothing compromise it let let me not negotiate with it in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you I bless you I glorify you thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace in Jesus Christ name we pray amen